The theme is appropriate. It's Christmas. It's baptism. The theme today is birth. Because from next quarter onward, we're going to talk about new beginnings. The new that we are hoping for, the new we are looking forward to in 2022. When we get out of the, the struggles, the pressure, the, the burden of the pandemic. To look forward to a future that God has prepared for us, for His people. You know, a new birth is actually a, a crazy thing. For those moms who have given birth, for those husbands, fathers, mothers, grandmothers, you look at it and it's like, yeah, somebody's pregnant, you're going to give birth. But when you pause and you think about it, it's crazy. That's a life in another life. From nothing, it becomes something. For those who have twins, even crazier, double. Like the somebody just, just from this non-existing cell becomes a whole, whole functioning human being. And then it grows inside somebody like alien. Like this, this is just crazy. You hear the heartbeat for the first time. When you feel the kick, the fist bump on the tummy, you're just like, what is going on? Birth is miraculous. But yet... So human. That as humans, we are invited of, to, into this journey of experiencing miracles every day, that yet we deny the existence of the supernatural who gives us this miracle. You think, oh, that's normal, but it's not. Just ask the doctors who deliver kids. I was chatting with the doctor that delivered Lucas, and he's like, you think it's just a routine job, like every day, but imagine that moment. And I had to experience that because the assistant doctor was not there and I, and I was called to help out in the whole process of Lucas coming out, which I was totally not prepared for because you watch the movies, right? You're supposed to be all in scrubs and all that and then you help out. No, no, I was in t-shirt, shorts and slippers. And then he, she looked at me, and then she's all organic, doesn't use any ma machinery. She used a hip, and she go, Father, come. I'm like, come? Over to take photos? No, 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 no. Help me, because the doctor's coming. He's not here yet. And I'm like, okay. Then the part when she says, cut the umbilical cord, I'm like, I've never cut anything human like that. Chi Chong Fan, maybe, you know. It's like amazing experience. And the moment where you look at Lucas going from purple to pink, it's just like, Ugh. birth. It's amazing. That's physical birth. But what's more amazing and more subtle is spiritual birth. You don't really observe the actual process of how it happens and then it happens. That from a person who is living, a new life springs forward because of the Spirit in that person's life. Bring new hope, new identity, new direction. Amazing. Scripture reading for today, if you have your Bible, turn with me because we're not only going to read verse 3. We're going to read the rest of it. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again. All those who accept. To a living hope. You're not born into despair. You're not born into legalism. You're not born into obligation. You're not born into burden. You're born into living hope. Amen. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Do you realize what he's saying? That every spiritual birth came free of charge to us but cost Jesus everything. That everything we experience in this is impossible without Jesus. That because of Jesus, His resurrection from the dead all of us can experience this miraculous spiritual birth into living hope. 
for those of you who have been baptized, are you living in hope? Or has life pushed you down? Has life stacked on so much burdens, demands, stress, pressure, that you've it's, it's squeezed out hope from you? If yes, let me remind you that we are born into living hope. Hope is the life essence of a Christian. Because without hope, as the Apostle Paul would say, then we Christians are the saddest of them all. Born into living hope. Carry on reading. To an inheritance... Verse 4, that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. you know, when we're young, we think, what is this amazing thing that's kept in heaven for me? What is this thing that, that, that has to be guarded that is, what is it? So this, if you ever visit Taipei, you visit the uh, Chiang Kai-shek uh, Memorial, you see this guy there. Ever since I was three years old, it has been the mission of my life to make this guy blink. So I used to live in Taiwan as I was three or four years old, the age of Lucas, and I'd be like, Mommy, Daddy, why is he not moving? He's guarding. He has a duty. For one hour, he will not blink. He will not what? He will not move an inch. He will not react to anything you do. And I'd be like, I want to make him move. And I'll go there. Everybody's like paying attention. Usually people go and watch the change of guards. Nah, I go and there's nobody just to try and make this guy do something. I will like make funny face. I will sing. I will do funny. I'll dance around. It doesn't move. I've tried for years. And then after I grew up, right? Like before I married Tiff, <laughs> old man, still my mission. I went again with my best friend big and tall guys, and we go like, just stare at him for like a good five minutes, just trying to make him do something stupid. He didn't. Then a question occurred to me, what is he guarding? What is he guarding? Why is he there? Who is he protecting? I'll tell you later. Karen reading says, Who by God's power, verse 5, are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So God guards something for us too in heaven. And it seems to suggest that it is this inheritance that's imperishable that has to be guarded and is kept in heaven. What is that? What is this thing that God is guarding that... You know, and it can only be accessed through faith. And it seems so confusing and vague. And for the longest time, Christians would think, that is this. Do you know what this is? If you are a keen, careful reader of the Bible, this is how heaven's supposed to look like. A cube of gold with pillars and purple, red colors by the side. That's not how I imagine heaven to be, but anyway, that's biblically accurate as a symbol. Huh? That's the problem. The Bible says heaven is a symbol. But from young, growing up in church, you've always been told that heaven is what you're waiting for. If you believe in Jesus, you get to go to heaven. And if you read these verses, it seems to suggest that what is guarded and protected and, and, and by God is heaven. It's this promise, this gift of eternal life and living in this awesome place where you run with the lions and, 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 and ride the, the tigers and it's this beautiful environment that we're just waiting for it to happen and this earth is horrible, it's a disaster and this pandemic has told me that this world is not my home. And just wait. Heaven come quickly, 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 heaven come quickly. And that's all we live our lives as Christians, waiting for the time to escape into heaven. 
But is it what it is? Is that what the Bible is telling us, that that's all we have to look forward to in terms of our living hope? Is our living hope a place? Is that what you're waiting for? Is that what baptism is about, Nehemiah and David? Is that what you saw you get to this cube of gold? Very glaring and bright with doors of pearl. There's like a singular pearl. Too bling for me. Is that what you're waiting for? Is that what God is guarding? Is that what Jesus died to give us? Just a place to go? I don't think so. If that's all it is, then it's really, really demoralizing. Then it's really, really sad. Then it's really, as Christian, I would give it up right now. Because this, I'm not just following Christ and Jesus and doing all that I'm doing for the sake of going to just a place made out of metal. I prefer grass, trees, clouds, people. Verse 6. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. Do not miss that. That while we're waiting, we might go through trials, and some of us feel that these two years have been a really challenging time. And the Bible predicted that's how Christian walk is supposed to be. It's not just smooth sailing. Once you're baptized, everything goes well, and the next thing you know, you're in heaven. That's not what it is. But I was telling you that as a reality, and the word they use, if necessary, sometimes we need that reminder that you have been grieved. There's been certain trials that you have to experience so that the tested genuineness of your faith more precious than gold. Look at that. More precious than gold. If heaven's made of gold, it's worth nothing. Because something that God is asking you to have is more precious than gold. Your faith is more precious than gold. That perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and, glo and glory and honor at the revelation of of Jesus Christ. Jesus was revealed thousands of years ago, not on actual 25th of December, but he was born in the manger. Not just to save us, but to guide and guard and lead us into this beautiful thing promised called the living hope for all of us. Verse 8, Though you have not seen him, here we go, what is this imperishable thing, our inheritance that God is guarding? You love Him. Though you do not now see Him, you believe in Him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining, there you go, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your soul. The salvation of our souls is not that we don't die. It's not that we go, go to heaven. True salvation in Jesus Christ is that you love Jesus. And because you love Jesus, you're connected to Jesus, you're living with Jesus, the side effect is eternal life. It is not the sole purpose of Christianity to gain eternal life. It is just an incidental side effect of loving Jesus. So I urge the two newly baptized that this journey is not about getting there. It's not about perfecting, as Nirma said, perfecting the way you behave. It's perfecting the way you love somebody. And for those of you who've been in love, know that that's going to take an entire lifetime. That's why you need eternity, because to love God to love Jesus, you need an eternity to learn how to do that. Because you can never reach the point where it says, I love Jesus to the max. Even humans, try telling your wife that. I've loved you to the max that I can love you, and it cannot grow anymore. Well, you better learn some more, the wife will tell you. You can love her to the max that you can, to the utmost of her capacity today. This moment, actually. The next moment, you should love her even more. 
The next moment, the next hour, the next minute that's been blessed into your life should teach you to love them even more. Every minute of growth, you should learn to love your kid, your wife, your friends, your family more. All the more God. God is this existence that beyond, that's beyond our understanding. That's amazing that it takes you a lifetime of eternity. I don't even know what that even looks like. So just keep loving God. And that is the most wonderful existence. That's the living hope. That the hope we have is that we can be in relationship with this God who loves us back even more. That's the crazy thing. You're not trying to initiate this love because you're like responding to this love. It's just like you're an empty cup and then God pours so much love into you that your only reaction, your only thing you can do is just an overflow with love that flows back and respond to Him. That's Christianity. When was the last time you expressed your love to Jesus? Doesn't it have to be words? It doesn't have to be like a gift. It can be in your own way of expressing love, but when was the last time you expressed your love to God? As human beings, it's so easy to fall into the trap of just claiming God's love. God, thank you for loving me. Bless me. Thank you so much. Receive, receive, receive. And that's all right. But then let's ask ourselves, if we really love God, then there will be a respond to that. When was the last time? When was the last time you felt touched by the love of God to the point that you just like, you want to just express it back to God? God is not just a knowledge thing. Knowledge is important. You can't love somebody you don't know. You can't love somebody you don't really understand fully, but you can actually. If you ask me whether I love my son, Lucas, yes. Do I understand him all the time? No. There are things where I'm just like, what is he doing? Where did that come from? Which I'll be gently reminded. You came from you by my wife. My son does strange things that makes me love him more. He'll cry when we try to wake him up for school. The moment we leave the door, he's happy. Magic door. As we walk to school, he starts singing. Then we reach the bridge that goes towards his school. He says, I'm so tired. I need to be hugged. I need to be carried. Okay. Carried the moment he reached the school door when he sees his classmate. I'm not tired anymore. I'm a big boy, I'm going to walk myself. And he sees the security lady who, who greets him every morning, he starts dancing. I don't understand my son. But I think I influenced him a lot. And every time I see it, I just love him more. It's strange. It cannot be understood. It cannot be understood. It cannot be explained. We can't understand everything about God. It's going to take us a lifetime. But we can start loving him today. We can start loving him now. It doesn't have to be Christmas to celebrate the birth of God. It doesn't have to take Christmas to, to proclaim Jesus and His love. It doesn't even have to take a worship service to do that. Do you know you can express your love to God outside of church? It's allowed. You, you won't get penalized. Do you know you can express love to God to people who don't believe in God? And it's okay. Do you know it's okay to express love to God by yourself? My housemate used to think I'm crazy because I'd be singing praise song in my room all by myself. They're all non-Christians, right? And like, like middle of the night, because I just did a devotion. It's so awesome. I started singing. And they're like, James, it's 11 o'clock. That's your lullaby, guys. I love my bros. It's okay. It's okay to quietly dwell in silence as an expression of just and ex experiencing that immerse yourself in that love of God. It's okay. But it's okay to do that all the time. Now to invite the two baptism okay, to please stand as I invite the whole church to pray with me for a prayer of commitment and blessing to them. And in this prayer, I invite all of us to also commit yourself once again to God. 
in His love. Let's pray. Father, we love You. And all of us have our own different way of expressing it. And today, these two, Father, have expressed their love for You, their commitment to You by the physical act of being baptized. The act may be normal, but Father, we know the miraculous new birth that's happening in their life is beyond our human comprehension. And Lord, as people sit here among us who also love you and may have neglected you, and this Christmas day, may you reignite our love for you, our passion for you. The Lord remind us that as Christians, when we are baptized, we're baptized into this living hope of a relationship with God that we will spend an eternity expressing it and receiving it. So on this Christmas Day, I pray for blessings for everybody here and the family who's represented, that we will not only celebrate you on this day, but just every single day of our lives, we we'll celebrate this wonderful gift. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As you see So as you exit this place, there's two things the church has prepared for you. One is a gift goodie bag for each family. And secondly, there's a snack pack that I don't know, first come, first serve. I don't know. That's enough, I think. And then, thanks to Auntie Sutira, Uncle Bun Singh, and Auntie Felicia for organizing this, we have lunch packs for you. We can't have potluck just yet, but we have bento boxes prepared for you. You can go eat it at Merici Reservoir if you want, but unfortunately, we can't eat it in this premise. But Hopefully this Christmas day, we're taking a step closer back to normality. Merry Christmas. God bless. Take care. Can we rise for the closing song? receive the benediction. May the love of God, the peace of Jesus, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you through this Christmas season into the new year. Amen. Amen.